Let's make some 21 day dry aged bone in ribeye. All right, welcome to Kitchen Captain. I'm Ian Walsh and today we have an adventure. We're gonna do a wood fired dry aged bone in ribeye, which is this dinosaur cut of beef right here. Let's go. This glorious cut of beef was lopped right off this big dog right here. And this dry ager pretty much does all the work for us. All we have to do is get an incredible cut of beef, which happens to be a 24 pound prime bone in ribeye. And this thing managed this dry aging process to a T. We really want the dry aged flavor to stand out and be the star of the show with this big hunk of meat. So we're gonna pat this dry, get rid of any excess moisture to build a perfect crust. And we're gonna hit it with a little bit of oil and a ton of salt and pepper. That's a legit triple finger hunk of bone in ribeye. We're not going light here today. And then we are going to season this thing generously, all capitals, with salt. We've used thick quite a bit in this cooking show, but this might be thick with like four C's. This is, this is no joke. Almost lost her. Get your forearms warmed up. We're going in with some fresh cracked pepper. A big component to this is to get your meat out of the fridge before you start cooking, like 30 minutes to an hour. Let it try to come up in temperature to whatever the room is and start your cook from there. In sourcing a piece of meat this big, I actually had an alarmingly difficult time trying to get this to Maui. But thankfully, Tui's Butchery and Bistro was able to get a prime cut of beef and they actually lopped this thing off for us so it's perfectly cut, a little French bone, and it's gonna fit the skillet perfect. Okay, our cook choice today is gonna be wood fired in this Gosney dome. You wanna have everything kind of prepped for this type of adventure. Like we have somewhere to put this scalding hot skillet and we have our sheet pan of tools laid out kind of like a scene from Dexter. You're not, you don't want to be running around once this starts going. We're cooking at about just under 900 degrees right now in this oven. That's just a little canola oil. Now we're just going to start searing this off. Just going to put the fat down first. And we want full contact over the whole skillet. Don't have it like tilted up. If it doesn't fit your skillet, trim the bone down. Now we're just gonna let this cook for about four to five minutes, pull it out, check the crust on the bottom. If it's where we want it, we're gonna flip it, do another four to five minutes. So to my understanding, I'm no rocket scientist, but you wanna have some oil in the skillet for your first contact of the meat too. Yes, there's a ton of fat in a ribeye and that'll render down, but for that initial contact, we use a little bit of canola oil just so it doesn't blacken right against the cast iron. A little lubrication, if you will. Okay, it's been five minutes. We're gonna pull it out and check our bottom layer. Nice crust development. So we're gonna do about four to five minutes on this side too. And this technique was actually recommended by a good friend of mine, Chef John Hiller. And I was debating doing this just in a cast iron skillet and butter basting it or doing a reverse sear in a smoker and then onto a charcoal grill. And he was like, if you have access to doing it wood fired style, make it happen. And I can already smell how much flavor is probably just getting jammed right into this piece of meat. This pizza oven is scorching this thing like molten lava from below it. And then it's so hot from the top, it's actually enhancing the crust on that side too. Good little invention, this thing, the Gosney Dome. So let's give this a little probe check. And we're gonna aim for about 115 to 120. Yeah, I think we're done. We're gonna rest this for about 10 minutes. And our ending temp, we're aiming for like 135-ish. When you pull a cast iron skillet out of an oven that has been in the 900 degree Fahrenheit area, definitely leave something on there so you don't forget it. Because if you're dumb like me, the palm of your hand will meet that 900 degree skillet 
and it'll bother you for a little while. We've been resting for about 12 minutes. Let's take this thing right down the bone. Oh my. Stunning. Literally cutting like butter. And that crust. Don't think for like one second I'm not gonna gnaw on that bone either. I mean, that's a pretty fun way to cook a steak. Hit this thing with a little flaky Malden sea salt, and we are off to the races. Let's see what we've done to ourselves here. Look at that, can't even pick it up, it just ripped the end of it right off. That is so tender. Trying to get through it and absolutely absurd. Way more tender, way more flavorful. That's stupid good. It tastes like a legit steakhouse. Like you walk into a beautiful restaurant and they have a wall of dry aging meat. That's what it tastes like. The fact that you can just bust that out right at home, incredible. Let's try a little bit of this end here. This is take your breath away good. I feel like one of the best parts. I can't believe people leave these on the plate in the restaurant just so they look a little cleaner, a little more posh. Don't fear going back to the dinosaur era and just getting right into this thing. The fact that we just put this giant piece of meat in here and literally did nothing but empty that Himalayan salt tray out every few days, we're gonna do a lot of meat in this thing. And I guess you can do salami, pork, fish, venison, whatever else you wanna put in there. Okay, there we go. 21 day dry aged prime bone-in ribeye. Thanks for watching.